Welcome everyone, this is Brother Scott, and I greet you once again in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and he's the only one that can do that. No other uh, person can do that, because he is God manifest in the flesh, and he came down here to die for our sins the first time he came down, and he... Uh, was buried, but he didn't stay in the grave. He arose again the third day and is seated at God the Father, at the right hand of uh, the Father, and he is here to make intercession for us, and he wants you to come to him and be saved. So, I uh, hope you'll trust him today. All right, so we are in uh, Numbers chapter 21, and we'll be reading 21 through 23 today. All right, so let's get started here. Chapter 21. And verse 1 says, And when King Arad, the Canaanite, which dwelt in the south, heard uh, t tell that Israel came by the way of the spies, then he fought against Israel, and took some of them prisoners. And Israel vowed a vow unto the Lord, and said, If thou wilt indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. And there he goes. Uh, Doing what God says, destroying their cities. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel, and delivered up the Canaanites. And they utterly destroyed them and their cities. And he called the name of the place Hormah. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. <laughs> so they said there was no bread, but yet now they're saying that uh, they loatheth this light bread that God gives them. And uh, not satisfied with God, what God gives us. And then we want to go back to Egypt because we think it's better down there in Egypt in the world and in the flesh when... Uh, we should realize that uh, it's way better to be with God and uh, what God gives us. Amen. So let's not murmur and complain like they did and use that as an example. Uh, so here we go. Uh, verse 6, it says, And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. So here we go with the Lord sending them fiery serpents. And this is a picture of Jesus uh, going on the cross. And verse 7 says, Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass, that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. So there you go. If you look upon Jesus and believe on Jesus, you shall live once you're bitten with sin. And then he will save your soul and wash away that sin. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in Oboth. And they journeyed from Oboth and pitched in uh, Iger Ab Abram in the wilderness, which is before Moab, toward the sun rising. From thence they removed and pitched in the valley of Zered. From thence they removed and pitched on the other side of Ar Arnon, which is in the wilderness that cometh out of the coast of the Amorites. Uh, for Arnon is the border of Moab between Moab and the Amorites. Wherefore, it is said in the book of the wars of the Lord what he did in the Red Sea and in the brooks of Arnon and at the stream of the brooks that goeth down to the dwelling of Ar and uh, lieth upon the border of Moab. And from thence they went to Be uh, Beer, uh, that is the well whereof the Lord spake unto Moses, Gather the people together, and I will give them water. Then Israel sang this song, Spring up, O well, sing ye unto it. The princes digged the well, the nobles of the people digged it, by the direction of the lawgiver, with their staves, 
and from the wilderness they went to uh, Matana, and from Matana to N uh, Nahalio, and from Nahalio to uh, Bamoth, and from Bamoth in the valley that is in the country of Moab to the top of Pisgah, which looketh toward uh, Jeshimon. And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, saying, Let us pass through thy land. We will not turn into the fields or into the vineyards. We will not drink of the water of the well, but we will go along by the king's highway until we pass thy borders. And Sihon would not suffer Israel to pass through his border. But Sihon gathered all his people together <clears throat> and went out against Israel into the wilderness. And he came to Jahaz, <clears throat> excuse me, and fought against Israel. And Israel smote him with the edge of the sword and possessed his land from Arnon unto Jabuk, uh, even unto the children of Ammon. For the border of the children of Ammon was strong. And Israel took all these cities, and Israel dwelt in all the cities of the Amorites in Heshbon, and in the, all the villages thereof. For Heshbon was the city of Sihon, the king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab, and taken all his land out of his hand, even unto Arnon. Wherefore they that speak in Proverbs say, Come into uh, Heshbon, let the city of Sihon be, be built and prepared, for there is a fire gone out of Heshbon, a flame uh, from the city of Sihon, it, it, it hath consumed Ar and Moab, and the lords of the high places of Arnon. Woe to thee, Moab! Uh, thou art undone, O people of Chemosh. He hath given his sons that escaped, and his daughters into captivity unto Sihon, king of the Amorites. We have shot at them. Uh, Heshbon is perished, even unto uh, to Dib Dib Dibon, and we have laid them waste, even unto Nopha, uh, which reacheth unto uh, Medi Mediba. Uh, thus a Israel dwelt in the land of the Amorites, and Moses sent to spy out Jazer, and they took the villages thereof, and drove out the Amorites that were there, and they turned and went up by the way of Bashan, uh, and Og, the king of Bashan, went out against them, he and all his people, to the battle of en Enredi, or en Enredi. And the Lord, Lord said unto Moses, Fear him not, for I have delivered him into thy hand, and all his people, and his land. And thou shalt do to him as thou didst unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, which dwelt in Heshbon. So they smote him and his sons, and all his people, until there was none left him alive, and they possessed his land. Chapter 22 And the children of Israel set forward, and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side, Jordan by Jericho. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was sore afraid of the people, because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the people of Israel, or the children of Israel, I should say. Uh, excuse me, the children of Israel. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us, as the ox licketh up the grass of the field? And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers, therefore, unto Balaam, the son of Beor, to uh, Pithor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against us, or against me, he says. Uh, come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I what? that he who thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. And they came unto Balaam, and spake unto him the words of Balak. 
And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, as the Lord shall speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. And God came unto Balaam, and said, What men are these with thee? And Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covereth the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them. Peradventure I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with, with them, that thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. So God is telling Balaam this. And Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refuseth to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went unto Balak and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. And Balak sent yet again princes more and more honorable than they. And they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus saith Balak the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me, for I will promote thee unto very great honor, and I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, if Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God, to do less or more. Now, therefore, I pray you, tarry ye also here this night, that I may know what the Lord will say unto me more. And God came unto Balaam at night, and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But get the word which I shall say unto thee, that shalt thou do. And Balaam rose up in the morning, and saddled his ass, and went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled, because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for, his advers for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. <clears throat> and the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way, and went into the field, and Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards, a wall be, uh, being on this side and uh, a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself unto the wall, and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further, and stood in a narrow place, where was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. <laughs> it's funny how uh, the donkey is obeying more than the man. And then we're about to find out how Balaam uh, lost his mind and starts talking to the donkey. Uh, and it says here in verse 27, And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord... She fell down un under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee, that thou hast smitten me these three times? <laughs> and here you go, Balaam talking back to the ass. Uh, and Balaam s said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in mine hand, for now I would kill thee. <clears throat> Now would I kill thee, excuse me. Uh, and the ass said unto Balaam, Am not I thine ass, upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Uh, was I ever wont to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head, and fell flat on his face. See, there you go, falling flat on your face. Every time uh, somebody saw the Lord, they fell forward, not backward. Uh, so you think you're slaying the spirit and stuff and falling backwards and doing all that crazy shaking and stuff. That's not, that's not the Holy Spirit doing that. That's some unclean spirit, <laughs> or perhaps it's just the flesh, just being how the flesh is. So be careful of that. Uh, so he uh, fell flat on his face, and the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me, and turned from me, 
these three times, unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee, and saved her alive. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displease thee, I will get me back again. And the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, Go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto thee, that thou shalt speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. And when Balak heard that Balaam was come, he went out to meet him unto a city of Moab, which is in the border of Arnon, which is in the utmost coast. And Balak said unto Balaam, Did I not earnestly send unto thee to call thee? Wherefore camest thou not unto me? Am I not able indeed to promote thee to honor? And Balaam said unto Balak, Lo, I am come unto thee. Have I now any power at all to say anything? The word that God putteth in my mouth, that shall I speak. Amen. And uh, so should all of us that are saved. Uh, if you trust in Jesus, we should uh, uh, speak what God puts in our mouth. Amen. Uh, and Balaam went with Balak, and they came unto Kirjath uh, Huzath. And Balak offered oxen and sheep, and sent to Balaam and to the princes that were with him. And it came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam and brought him up into the high places of Baal, that uh, thence he might see the utmost part of the people. Chapter 23 and Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken, and Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram. And Balaam said unto Balak, Stand by thy burnt offering, and I will go. Peradventure the Lord will come to meet, to meet me, and uh, whatsoever he showeth me I will tell thee. And he went to an high place, and God met Balaam, and he said unto him, I have prepared seven altars, and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth, and said, Return unto Balak, and thus thou shalt speak. And he returned unto him, and lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice, he and all the princes of Moab. And he took unto his parable, and said, Balak the king of Moab hath brought me from Aram, uh, out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse me, Jacob, and come, defy Israel. How shall I curse whom God hath not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord hath not defied? Um, for from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob, and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous, and let my last end be like his. And Balak said unto Balaam, What hast thou done unto me? I took thee to curse uh, mine enemies, and behold, thou hast blessed them all together. And he answered and said, Must I not take heed to speak that which the Lord had put in my mouth? Yeah. And Balak said unto him, Come, I pray thee, with me unto another place, from whence thou mayest see them. Thou shalt see but the ut utmost part of them, and shalt not see them all, and cursed me them from thence. And he brought him into the field of Zophim, to the top of Pisgah and built seven altars, and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. And he said unto Balak, Stand here by thy burnt offering, while I meet the Lord yonder. And the Lord uh, met Balaam, and put a word in his mouth, and said, Go again unto Balak, and say thus. And when he came to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering, and the princes of Moab with him. And Balak said unto him, What hath the Lord spoken? And he took up his parable, and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear, hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, right, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? 
or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Amen. And he hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He hath, hath as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, What hath God wrought? Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion, and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie, lie down until he eat of the prey, and drink the blood of the slain. And Balaam said unto ba uh, Balak said unto Balaam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. But Balaam answered and said unto Balak, Told not I thee, saying, All that the Lord speaketh, that I must do? And Balak said unto Balaam, Come, I pray thee, I will bring thee unto another place. Peradventure he will, it will please God that thou mayest curse me them from thence. And Balak brought Balaam unto the top of Peor, that looketh toward uh, Jeshimon. And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven bullocks and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam uh, had said, and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. Amen. So, there we go. And that will uh, wrap it up for today's reading. And tomorrow, Lord willing, we'll uh, continue with uh, what's going on with Balaam and Balak. And uh, continue and find out uh, what happens next. Amen. So, I hope you'll stay tuned for that. Alright, so... That will about wrap it up for, excuse me, the Bible reading for today. So, I praise the Lord. And tomorrow we'll be reading um, chapters 24 and 25. So, I hope you'll stay tuned for that tomorrow. Until then, may the Lord richly bless you. And you all have a great and wonderful rest of your Friday. And if you're not saved, today is that day of salvation. The Bible says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. For Jesus Christ has come down to this earth the first time and he uh, lived a holy sinless life and he went to the cross and laid down his life for you and for me and he wants you to be saved. He didn't stay in the grave. He is risen forevermore and he is waiting for you to call upon him to save your soul. So I hope you'll do that today. Amen. All right. So if you don't uh, trust Jesus, well, uh, and you die in your sin, judgment is coming, and then you'll be cast into a lake of fire for all eternity. So don't want that to happen to you, friends. So hope you'll trust him today and realize that you can't save yourself, and no man can save you, no priest or pope or pastor can save you, uh, not doing a bunch of good works, that can't save you, water baptism cannot save, nothing, 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 nothing that we can do on this earth can save our souls. What Jesus did, he paid it all, amen? So we just simply go to him and believe on him and what he did on the cross, and uh, you can get in the book of uh, John in the Bible here and read what God did on the cross for you. And how he wants you to be saved so you can be with him for all eternity. Amen. Alright, well this is Brother Scott signing off. Till next time, bye-bye for now.